not enough just to say I'm against the war. You know, it's a starter. But you have to do something and you can do something. So this energy of love is something we can radiate very, very simply through us. We raise the hands, we visualize white light, we try to feel love energy in our hearts, not emotion per se, but a real love for all those involved in this conflict. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to call it prayer. You can call it the radiation of love energy. The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. Richard, welcome. Welcome to my show. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to you, Darren. Yeah, Thank great you. to have you in person. To do Thank you very much. Together. I thought we'd, um, we'd kick off today in this, in this new format by talking a little bit about what's changing on the spiritual show, spiritual freedom show, mm. sorry, and also what's not changing on the show. Yeah. So uh, obviously, first of all, we're on video, but also we wanted to start more and more, I think, with the question, the spiritual questions that people really want, really need answering today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which brings us, I think, to what's not changing, which is that the core of the show and... Um, our mission and what it's always stood for is sharing these incredible teachings of the nine freedoms. Absolutely. And perhaps you want to talk just for a moment about what, why that's so important to us here. Actually, I found the show, and by the way, these changes are all credit to Darren. He's the power behind these changes, and uh, I just happened to be here at the time. <laughs> but this show has absolutely, completely been an education to me. I mean, it's been a privilege to put out these teachings, reveal not just what's in the, the, the book and the text and the commentary in the book, but the lectures of Dr. King, which yeah. in their own right are tantamount, I believe, to transmissions at times. They're of that caliber, some of the things that he reveals about them. And, and there are things in there we just wouldn't understand if Dr. King hadn't explained them to mm. us. So I've really uh, changed as a result of doing the Spiritual Freedom Show. Uh, and the more you get into the Nine Freedoms, there's a great promise, actually, that when you study the Nine Freedoms, it'll open up many, many thoughts in your mind. Mm. Just that study, and thoughts will come to you that have never come to you before, and experiences will come to you. That certainly happened to me. So it's, if you like, the Bible of the show. It's an even greater set of teachings than the, than the Twelve Blessings, and that's saying a lot because the 12 blessings are truly one of the greatest teachings ever delivered to earth, as well as being a practice. By the way, I want to add, not only what you and I have been doing, but we've had some fantastic contributions from many people, all of them people, who live their lives by the teachings in the Nine Freedoms, which gives total credibility. All our guests have been people who do live by these teachings, um, to a greater or lesser extent. I mean, none of us do it fully, but they are putting it into practice. And I think that that's an absolute key to the Spiritual Freedom Show. Also, I have to say, isn't it been great? Some of the comments, mm. uh, they've surpassed all our expectations. Some mm. of the insights, some of the experiences that people, listeners have shared with us, totally. um, both on, you know, on blogs and also writing into the show. And then we raise their questions and their points. It's amazing. Uh, just what uh, what is triggered, I think. Yeah, and I would say anyone who does want to continue to share their stories, their experiences, please do. The show, yeah, spiritual freedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Um, but I think the point you've made there about you know these people who are living this on a daily basis, sharing those experiences today, very much the topic we want to cover is about that. Mm -hmm. And I think you know recently with the anniversary of the beginning of the war in Ukraine, there's definitely an opportunity for us, each and every one of us, to make a difference to the situation. For sure. And um, I, I think one of the biggest problems that people, I, I, I used to have a column in The Observer and it was a, a body and mind column and I had lots oh, yeah. of input from people in mental health area or people dealing with stress. And it's pretty well established that the most stressful feeling you can have is that feeling engendered by not having control over your life or over your situation. Helplessness. Helplessness. Mm. And that doesn't just apply to personal matters, it applies to the global matters. Mm. Um, and seeing poverty, seeing the pandemic, seeing all these things, but especially seeing a war mm. uh, which has brought terrible suffering to both sides, um, is, uh, induces this great sense of helplessness. And the great thing about the nine freedoms, one of the things we are told, is the answer. Mm. 
We're told what we, everybody can do. You don't have to be a politician or a negotiator, and certainly you don't have to be a soldier, to bring peace. You do it through the second freedom, which is love. Mm-hmm. Love is the creator of peace, Mars 6 tells us. And love can bring us freedom from war. That's a promise made in the nine freedoms. And we're also told uh, that uh, elsewhere that inaction can be a contributor to war. I mean, there are people who are anti-war, a lot of anti-war protesters. Yes, they'll go out and say their piece and say some words which may have some effect or not have some effect. But relative to radiating love energy, that is not active or not nearly as active, not nearly active enough. So it's not enough just to be a pacifist, if, as if right, you like. Right, right, right. You have to be an active pacifist, and the way to be an active pacifist is to radiate love energy through prayer, through healing. Um, many people are praying for peace uh, around the world for various reasons, um, and peace in Ukraine conflict, and that's all a good thing. But The key is to do it as powerfully, as effectively as you can, and unemotionally as you can, and certainly uh, not taking one side or the other, just peace. Because the only way to stop war, it's very simple, is for people to stop fighting. (laughs) And that's too simple for for Mm -hmm. a lot of politicians to get their heads around. Mm -hmm. People have just got to stop fighting. And love energy is the thing that will bring that into being. Yeah, that's a, that's a massive insight, isn't it? Because a lot of people think that um, the antidote to war is pacifism, but actually what we're saying is not it's love energy in an active way, radiating yeah. it in the ways that you've yeah. described through prayer and healing and whatnot. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about what we mean by this powerful way that you've just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, one of the things all the way through the, the, the nine freedoms is that it's not enough in these days just to detach, mm. just to go off. Uh, into a you know, peaceful isolation yeah. and so on. And that also applies to war. It's not enough just to say, I'm against the war. Um, it, you know, it's a starter. Um, there are people, of course, who are in favor of the war uh, for, on both sides. So it's a starter. But you have to do something, and you can do something. So en- this, this energy of love is something we can radiate very, very simply through us. We raise the hands, we visualize white light, we try to feel love energy in our hearts, not emotion per se, but a real love for all those involved in this conflict and all the victims and all the casualties. And by the way, it's not a very good thing to dwell while you're doing this too much on the suffering. Mm. Certainly be aware of the suffering that's going on there, and this can motivate you to, to make such a prayer. Or if you don't want to call it prayer, a healing effort. And let, let's, let's tackle that issue. What if you're not religious? What if you don't believe in prayer? You don't have to be religious. You don't have to call it prayer. You can call it the radiation of love energy or right. some phrase like that. Um, you, you don't have to pray to God. I would pray to God. You might pray to Brahma. You might pray to another name. The source. For the, the, you know, whatever, that, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, or you might not believe in any of those things. You just purely want to radiate goodness, let's call it that, uh, to others. It will have an effect. And there's another thing it will do. It will manipulate karma. Mm. That's a massive theme in the Nine Freedoms. And a, perhaps the biggest theme in Dr. King's teaching is the manipulation of karma, not the manipulation of people. No, mm. the manipulation of karma, your own karma, and of course, to some degree, world karma, because that changes the balance on earth. If people just stand by, wring their hands, feel very regretful, feel impotent, don't do anything, not much change is brought. But if people start to make that effort, um, the more effort that's made, the better, actually. The, it's, it's one thing to do it for like a couple of minutes when it suits you. It's another thing to say, look, I'm going to do this every day for an hour or whatever it might be, or every day for half an hour. Um, whether it's convenient or not, I'm doing this and I'll cancel other things if I have to, things I want to do in order to do this. That's a manipulation of karma. That's an effort. And that will affect the karma of the world. And since your focus is on the Ukraine conflict and peace, it will affect, to some degree, that situation and the bringing of peace. 
Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, we said love energy is the answer. What does it actually do? I mean, we talked about the karmic implications. Okay. But what does this energy actually do otherwise apart from the karma? I mean, how would it help to change or bring about peace in this situation? I think, okay, I think people can relate to that maybe through healing, okay. uh, through individual healing. So if you start with individual healing, one-on-one -on -one healing, as it were, which can be done over a distance, it's an energy you can actually feel. It's a tangible energy. You can actually feel both the patient, as it were, and the healer can feel this. This is a force, and it impacts on the aura of the, the, the individual because the physical life is the reflection. That's the reflection. Mm. There's the psychic that's life. That's the insight, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. mento psychic life, the auric life, if you like. That's the reality. That's, well, it's closer to the reality. Mars Sector 6 calls that the life. Mm. The reality is even beyond that. Yeah. Um, so when you work in this level, just if you, if you now sort of globalize that concept. I remember doing a TV interview some years ago with some healers, good, very good mm. healers. And they, those healers, didn't believe they could do anything about world situations. They knew they could help people. They didn't know that they could do that. It was a, like a revelation to them. Mm. But if, if you can do it for an individual, to some degree you can do it for the world. The big difference is you won't know right. the exact effect. You won't know. You, I mean, you might have saved three people's lives right. when you did that prayer. You just won't know their names or what happened. Or where they are. Or where they are. But the energy must go there. And it must impact at the subtle level and at a mental level. If you think about it like this, peace negotiations, political negotiations, if you like, they're only going to work if there's a will among the people negotiating yeah. to make them work. We know, of met, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but look at the Middle East. I mean, some of the problems there have been going on for 3,000 years at least. And, you know, every now and again, there's a settlement and then, it, you know, it, it breaks out. But if you can go beyond just the, as it were, the written word uh, and just and certainly beyond even just the money aspect of it, which is an important aspect sometimes, but it's just a, an aspect of it and get to the mental root of it and the people change or the enough people change, uh, certainly people of influence change, they won't want to go to war. Then there won't be a war. Right, right, right. It's like this change has to happen from within individuals so that yeah. the, the action, the, the things that we, the, that we do as a result of thinking in a different way can actually take place. Yeah, I mean, I think we all know this. We all know people who can sit in a room. They may not even be extroverted people. They might be quite shy and quiet people, mm. but they have a presence. Mm. And when you leave, when you're in their presence, you change. And when they leave, you are a bit different. I think a lot of people can recount that yeah. type of experience. It's yeah. not maybe not even the words they've spoken. It's just their presence uh, of one kind or another. Might be very gentle, might be very dynamic, mm. but it brings a change. Look at it that way. That's what can happen yeah. by radiating love energy. What do you think, what would you say in terms of people kind of developing more confidence that this is a real thing, you know, because as you say, even to those healers, it was like kind of a revelation that they could make a difference on a global scale. And to other people hearing it, maybe like, well, how can I make a difference at all? So, you know, is this, can we talk about how people might begin to prove this thing to themselves um, in terms of spiritual energy as a real thing? You can, I think, best prove it to yourself by doing it, <laughs> because you'll feel it, right. that it's real. This right. isn't a theory, this is an energy, and you might feel it as a tingling sensation at the top of the head when you start to visualize it. Uh, funnily enough, I've done this experiment on mainstream radio stations before now, oh, yeah. and uh, I've guided people, first of all, with a little bit of breathing, and then guided them to visualize white light, raise the hands, and send energy out for peace, or for whatever we were doing at the time, and then people have phoned in and, and, and they have felt it. And they've got no, they're not people I know, they're not people who, yeah, according to them, have done it there. before, yeah. Mm. They almost have a vested interest in saying, I didn't feel it, mm. but they, you can. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna feel it the first time. I did, I felt it the first time I tried it. And in, in a way that was undeniable, actually disturbing. It was so strong, I actually got up in the middle of the night and walked to the home of the person who taught me this <laughs> to find out what was going on. It was so strong. Yeah. But that won't necessarily happen to everybody. But in time, I'll say this, and you can hold me to this. Anyone watching can hold me to this. 
If you do it with enough intensity for long enough, you will definitely experience it as a real force. So that's one way. And of course, the other way is the sort of personal ways I mentioned through healing individuals. Mm. That's where you can see. Now, it's new, you know, also there is the karma of the individual. To, sure. So sometimes you'll get what people would call a miracle. That happens. And sometimes not much seems to change. So it's not going to happen every time, but you'll have it enough that the person at the very least will either certainly feel the energy, uh, and if they don't, they'll, they'll tend, I mean, we find most people, the majority of people who have healing from us tell us that they get better in one way or another. They may not be completely cured, but they're better able to cope, or they have less pain, or whatever it might be. So if you really look into it, you'll see that it works at that level. Yeah, I would say one thing that... Um I think is helpful when you're healing an individual just from my own experience is that there's this immediate feedback loop yeah. where even if, it, even if we're, not, you know, we're not talking about the condition but if we're just talking about what they feel in that moment mm. you know a lot of people say like wow they felt like a real heat or mm -hmm. you know they could feel like a tingling sensation or they suddenly felt very tired or mm -hmm. there was definitely a, a, a reaction to whatever you were doing and I think as mm. just as someone who's practicing healing that can be qu quite an encouraging thing to help you further on the path indeed um, I mean I, yeah no, please. Well, I just wanted also definitely second, you know, that experience that you talked about that you had at university where, you know, it was so, so yeah. disturbing even that you had to get yeah. up. Yeah, when I started to practice the 12 blessings in earnest in the beginning, um, the experiences I had were completely mind-blowing for me at the time because mm. they were nothing like I had experienced before. Mm. I'd always believed that energy must be a thing, like, you know, not just physical energy the way physicists talk about it, but like what we now call spiritual energy. Um, you know, starting to feel that heat and that tingling, that real pressure in the palm of your hands mm -hmm. and tingling in your head. I mean, um, just someone describing it to you, okay, that's one thing. But actually feeling it for yourself, there's a real kind of realization that takes place within you. Mm -hmm. And I think also with that realization, you, you have this even greater inspiration to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're talking about today with the Ukraine conflict. It is. Yeah. And, and, and with the 12 blessings, I mean, you can join in with people if you're like, if you're anywhere near a group who, do, who does that or you can join in online and you know we have people joining online and you can see sometimes the comments they're making they are feeling something totally. they are experiencing Definitely. something they can measure you know a particularly powerful service that they've 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 experienced by what's going on it's not just faith right. or belief those things are necessary on the path but that's not enough Right. It's direct experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we can talk a little bit about that because um, a lot of people sort of think that in religion you have to take things on just faith and belief. But that's not what we're saying here. We're saying, no. we're saying this is about experience and, uh, and therefore a, a way with which you can prove these things to yourself on the path. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can talk about the value of experience. It's yeah, I mean, I, I've... I've quoted before the idea, I think it was Swami Vivekananda, but all the yogis said it. This is, a, this is something you, you can know, mm -hmm. uh, you can see. Uh, and when I say this, I'm talking about God realization in this mm -hmm. particular case. But the same is true in the radiation of, of love in, in all aspects of spiritual practice. So in, in the Ethereum Society, uh, we don't rely on, on faith. I don't want to get people to get it wrong. Faith's a very valuable thing, by right, the way. Right. Faith, but faith is best when it's based on something definite, not a leap of faith, right. based on a logical deduction, really, that, okay, I've established, for example, beyond all doubt, through practicing it, that Dr. King is a genuine contact T of the cosmic masters of Mars Sector 6, of the Master Jesus, and that he was a master in his own right. Now that I've established through my own practices, my own investigations, my own experience. Now, if he tells me X, which I can't prove to myself, I'll take that on faith because of the other things. As I, a result, yeah, of it, but yes. you know, he's proved himself to me, right. and he wouldn't be able to say something like that that was wrong right. and still continue to be gaining the contacts he's gaining. So that must be true. That kind of faith or intuitive faith too, because intuition is real. That's mm -hmm. a whole other topic, I mm -hmm. think. But mm -hmm. that's, a, that's something that is not just a, that you, you can learn the difference between your intuition and your imagination. Some people don't, most people don't try to learn that difference. So they never know. Right. But you can. Some do, and so an intuitive-based faith is something far more than just 
as I say, a leap of faith. Um, I think people who ask for a leap of faith, they sometimes do it because they haven't got anything concrete to offer. Yeah. Um, you know. yeah. Now, belief, again, belief can be based on, on sound logic, can be based on your own experience. But we're looking for something more than even that. We're looking at experiencing certain things at least. For example, we talk about mountains which are holy, mm. mountains which have power in them. We're going to one on June the 25th. And we're going to be going there and everybody's welcome to go. It's in Devon. Not really a mountain, actually. It's really a hill. <laughs> uh, it's called Holston Down. And people can find out about that. We've had people come up on those. I actually remember TV crews coming up who were very sceptical people. But when they told me, not on camera, of course, <laughs> yeah, they did okay, tell yeah. me <laughs> off camera, that they felt the energy and the power there. Really? Wow. Yeah. So th these are real experiences that people can, can bank, if you like, in their sort of bank of, of which will build their faith, mm. you know. And then, of course, you can move even to higher levels than that. Mm. Um, there's one other aspect I just wanted to touch on. You touched on it a little bit briefly before when you were saying, you know, how we change from within, which was just consciousness. Mm. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't really name check that word, but I thought I would just come back to it mm. um, in terms of, you know, when we are, when we, do radiate this spiritual energy when we're talking about global healing. What's the, what change is happening there to global consciousness? How does that help in a situation like the, the Ukraine war? If you have a dark room, then the people sending love energy, prayer energy, mantra, whatever method they're using, even positive thoughts, you know, not positive thoughts, geared by politics or one-sidedness, mm. but positive thoughts into that arena. In that dark room, those are the pinpricks of light. Mm. The more pinpricks of light you get, the lighter the room becomes. Mm, nice it's no longer dark. If you get enough of them, the darkness goes and the war ends. Mm. It's over. Has to be over. Cannot continue in that light. But you've got to send the light there. Yeah. You can't sit back and say, well, I'm against war and do nothing and that, I think that is where a lot of pacifists actually go wrong in my humble opinion well, actually that's a great point to come back to before we finish because I think what we're really talking about here is spiritual action at the end of the day absolutely and it's quite easy actually just to say that you're against something and do nothing about it it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a very it's kind of weak position actually and what the nine freedoms teach us is how to be strong how to be yeah. more formidable in, our, in the impact that we can make in the world as a whole and the difference that we can make. Mm. And, and just our power as an individual, it's, it's reminding us of, of this unlimited power that we have within us and how mm. we can begin to manifest that. And in the way that we're talking about here is, is the spiritual work that can help to change the world. Very good point. And we've had, we've had pacifism on this world for centuries, mm. but with the nine freedoms and teachings like it, we have something else. We have active pacifism, mm. and an active pacifist is something to be. Hey everybody, it's Darren here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Richard and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, on your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.